Hey guys, I am Amit Kumar and welcome to this video in which we are going to talk about aggregate functions in SOAPQL. Topics that we will cover up in this video are what are aggregate functions, different types of aggregate functions in SOAPQL and how to use this SOAPQL with aggregate functions in Apex. So without wasting any time further, let's proceed with the video. SOQL provides aggregate functions that allows us to perform calculation on data sets. SOQL provides following aggregate functions which are count, count distinct, min, max, average and sum. Count returns the number of rows that are associated with the field. Count distinct returns the number of unique rows that are associated with the field. Min returns the minimum value of a field and max returns the maximum value of a field. Average returns the average value of the numeric field and sum returns the total value of the numeric field. Here average and sum function can only be used on numeric fields whereas the rest of the functions are applicable on all types of fields. So it's pretty much of talk and now it's time to see the things practically. And guys if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to stay updated with proper Salesforce tutorials and want to watch more tutorials, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Also, if you have thoughts or questions, drop it in the comments. I would love to hear from you and promise I will read every single one. Thank you so much guys and now you can proceed with the video. Hey guys, welcome to the practical session of aggregate functions in SOQL. So today we will see the aggregate functions that we can use in a SOQL query. So let's just use the SOQL query over here. Now if I am going to execute this query, you can see this is going to give me the result for it. Now I am going to use an aggregate function over here. Now one of the aggregate function is count function. Let me remove the rest of the fields from here and let me use the count function over the ID field. I can use count function on any of the field and what it is going to give me is, it is going to give me the total number of records that is existing over there for that specific field. For example, let me show you the previous query again. Now here you can see all the fields are having values. But let's see a query where some of the fields are blank. Let's suppose this query. Now if I'm going to execute this, there are few records for which annual revenue is blank, right? Now let me perform the count function on the ID field and count on the annual revenue and execute. So you can see for ID field it is giving me 13 and the reason is because there are 13 IDs that are there, right? But annual revenue it is giving me 8 only. So count actually counts the number of values for that specific field on all the records. Now we can use count distinct as well. Now to show you count distinct, let me show you one more query on account. Now select ID name and type and if I am going to execute this, here you can see it is giving me all the records. Now if I am going to count on type and if I am going to use count distinct on type you will get two different results. So here you can see count is giving me 13 because there are 13 values or 13 records who is having value for the type field. But when I am using count distinct it will count only unique value. So unique values are only four. Four unique values are there in the type field. Now let's use min, max, average and sum field. So let me call the min function on the name. Let me call the min function on annual revenue and let me execute this. So you can see min can be used on text fields and min can be used on number fields and in both the scenarios it will give me the minimum value. Now for text fields it will take according to the alphabetical order. Now the same can be done for max as well. Let me execute this and opposite to min it will give me the maximum value for that field among all the records. Now the next two aggregate function average and sum can only be used on numeric fields. We cannot use it on any text fields. So let me use average and sum on annual revenue and let me execute this. So you can see it is giving me the total sum of annual revenue and the average annual revenue over here. Now if I am going to use these aggregate functions in Apex code, how I am going to get the result and how I am going to access them. So this is the query. Now I am going to fetch the values. Generally you will see that because I am calling it on the account object, I should hold it in a list of account, right? Let me try to do that. Now if I will execute this, I am getting an error over here. And the error is very simple. 
I am getting it in the list of account, but it is expecting it to be a list of aggregate result. Now aggregate result is a class, predefined class available in Apex. And whenever you are using aggregate function, the result of that query should be hold in a list of aggregate result rather than the list of S object. So here it will be list of aggregate result. Let me name it as results. Now let me show you what will be the size of it. So if I'm going to print the size of result, it will be one. Now when we are making an aggregate function query, we get a single single row of result. That's why the result size will be one only. So let me execute this. And here you can see the result size is one. So what you can do, you can hold it in an aggregate result object itself instead of a list. Okay, now see what will happen. It is working. So when you are performing such queries where you are getting a single record of result instead of holding it in a list of aggregate result, you can hold it in a single aggregate singleton aggregate result object as now from this aggregate result object, we can get the values. We can get these results. Now the first one is sum and second one is average. So here I'm printing sum of annual revenue. Now how to get it from result to get the value from the result. You cannot directly use dot operator and mention it as sum of annual revenue. Here you have to use the get method and inside the get method, you have to pass either alias alias is something that we will discuss in the next video or you can use expr. Now expr represents expression and as many aggregate function you are passing as many expressions you have to pass starting from zero. So the first aggregate result or the first aggregate function will be referred as at expr zero. Similarly, the next one will be referred as expr one. Let me mention it as average of annual revenue. Let me execute this and here you go. Now this is how you will use aggregate functions in apex and you can access the values that you are getting as a result. Soon we will understand how we can use alias names. And in that case, you need not to use expr zero or expr one. Now one more point of cash over here, when you are performing such aggregate result functions, you should not use any normal field over here. Let's suppose I'm using name field. See what will happen. See, it is saying that field must be grouped. So when you are using such things, you should not use normal fields until unless it is grouped. Now how we can group it is something that we will discuss in the next video. That marks the end of this video. See you soon in the next video. Till then, thank you and take care.